Hey guys, remember when I made a video discussing which flaws in a comic CGC will often let slide, allowing for a still perfect 9-8 despite some negligible issues? Well today I thought we'd switch gears and discuss the comics with specific flaws that make you really want to avoid sending to CGC for danger of receiving a super disappointing grade. Everybody knows spine ticks, spine rolls, dirt, missing coupons or pages, bindery tears can start to bring down a grade. But here's some things that if CGC sees, they're gonna dock you the big boy points. Yes, these are flaws that CGC hates even more than emails from customers asking for an update on return times. We're specifically looking at things that don't feel like they should affect the grade as devastatingly as they do. This is James with Mint Hunter Comics, and these are the top five comic book flaws that CGC hates. What's interesting is CGC offers guides and definitions of common flaws that can happen to books. However, it doesn't discuss how big of a hit each flaw is to the grade of the comic. That's why this list is a personal collection of observations that I've noticed from submitting well over a thousand comics, as well as research from fellow submitters such as yourselves. And I'm going to start you guys off with one of the most unknown of flaws, store stamps. To even call this a flaw seems wrong, as these stamps tell the story of where a comic came from, and one might think CGC would appreciate that walk down history lane. No. Good God, not at all. Please do not submit books with stamping, thinking that they're going to get a 9.8. You are about to get hit by a whopper of a grade drop. It's an error that I've learned my lesson from and stupidly decided to test once again and received, interestingly, the same disappointing grade. By now, I can spot a 9.6 or a 9.8 within just 30 seconds. And whenever I've submitted 9.8 candidates to CGC, I kind of expect to be in or around that ballpark. But in the case of the most recent example, this free comic book day version of Batman Adventures number one with a Alakazam comic book shop stamp on it, an otherwise screamingly flawless book became a 8.5 unceremoniously after a visit to CGC. 8.5. The grader notes, Alakazam comics stamped onto book and nothing else. In the eyes of CGC, the only flaw was this comic shop's stamp, and yet we went not from a 9.8 to a 9.6 or a 9.4, but all the way into the land of 8.5. Now some of you may be saying, hey, I've seen 9.4s and 9.6s of comics with stamps on them. Well, from all that I can research and gather, and sadly, there's not much other than some chat boards and a CBCS thread. But the severity of the grade dip depends on how much wording is on the stamp. Meaning, is it just a date? Is it a full comic book shop name and date? I checked out the quote-unquote comic book grading standard on the Mile High website, and they seem to note that for a book to obtain the grade of a near mint, there can be no stamps of any kind. Stamps are allowed for very fine books, but they must be neatly placed date stamps only. Apparently, larger stamps that display comic store names is kryptonite for a professional grader for whatever reason. But James, aren't those stamps a sign of a pedigree? Honestly, they should be. However, CGC only recognizes certain collections and comic locations when reviewing stamps. With enough examples, CGC has been able to verify over 60 different pedigrees. However, the majority of stamp books you find today probably aren't going to be from those verified pedigree locations or collections. So therefore, if they're not, they're on the blacklist and must be given a shite grade. Yeah, it's definitely interesting how some stamps, CGC will give you a nice gold label and call it a treasured pedigree, and other stamps, CGC will be like, what is this blasphemy? I can't believe you stamped this comic with your unknown ass store. Get the f out of here and go get f by a rusty pipe. Jeez, CGC, playing favorites much? Up next, we have staple popping. Staple-related flaws can already be quite hurtful to the grade of a book. 
However, when a staple pops or tears, meaning the cover becomes loose and it appears the staple has punched through the spine, leaving it detached, uh, you really should consider keeping it raw. Allow me to save you the headache. I find the Silver Age and Early Bronze Age books are the ones that experience this unique flaw the most. And almost every time it happens, it seems to be the only real practical flaw, which always just makes it a tragedy when you have a high grade 9.2 looking sharp Silver Age book that comes back at a 5.5. Ooh, you knew they'd hit you for the staple, but did you think it would be that much? This is one of those defects that has always been the bane of the hobby. Even after third party grading came around, it still remains very difficult to properly grade a very nice book with this one major defect. And the worst part about these defects is that it's hard to hone down if the staple pop was due to bad handling or if it was just a manufacturing issue. Oftentimes in the 60s, books were stapled poorly and on poor paper. So even newer books of the time might have just as easily had the staple popped. It's the inability to decipher how the staple popped that might contribute to why CGC slams us so bad on these. I'm not saying it's not a big flaw as it's one of the most detrimental. I'm just saying that even though you would expect it to impact the grade, nothing can prepare you for how much it affects the grade. For this reason, just like when you see an overly busy stamp on your comic, Eh, better just to leave it alone. There are restorative techniques one can use, but at the expense of having the comic come back as a restored label, which can often decimate the value of any book. Perhaps one of the most equally frustrating thing about this flaw is sometimes people have seen that it doesn't hurt the grade that badly. It's almost like it's subjective how much they want to slam you for this exact same flaw. Anyway, you gotta really make sure it's worth the risk. It may not be. Up next, we have polybag indentations. I'm gonna give you the best example I've got in the book, Ultimate Fallout 4, the modern holy grail, the first Miles Morales, that Mark Bagley sweetness. Well, these comics came in polybags, which is a thin bag that would often have a seal running down the middle. Despite the plastic being incredibly thin and seemingly incapable of causing damage, it in fact does leave an ever so slight indent in your comics if stored in the poly bag for many years. Okay, well, you know, it's not color breaking. It's just honestly a tiny little bit of waviness, it almost looks like. How harsh could CGC really be? <laughs> How harsh, you say? How about dropping an unread copy of UF4 with no spine ticks, finger bends, dirt, or any flaw of any kind other than this indent to a 7.5? Now here's one where you can find lots of forums online, and I even made a video about polybag indentations on comics myself. So how could I be so wrong? about this ultimate Fallout 4. Yeah, they don't really hurt a comic that bad because they can fairly easily be pressed out. Not all hope is lost for this copy. But according to CGC, it might as well have had the page torn up and a dog peed on it. To prove that my 7.5 UF4 was completely unjustified and silly of a grade, me and many other submitters that fell victim to an overly brutal grading of polybag books specifically actually with this book in particular, promptly resubmitted, this time getting it pressed, and lo and behold, would you believe all the 9.8s that keep popping up? And for your book, you know, the, the, the good news is you could crack that slab, press it, and end up still with the 9698. That's right, folks. I wanted to prove that my 7.5 was purely a result of just this indent in the middle of the book. And while CGC still has my two copies of UF4, one a former 7.5 and one a former 8.0, the customer service rep confirmed that she can't tell me what the exact grades are, but they're both in the high nines. Amazing what grades you can see once a press removes this polybag indent. This just goes to show that a perfect 9-8 minty can get hacked down several blocks solely from this almost invisible error. Yeah, dropping an otherwise flawless book to a 7.5 or 8.0 seems harsh, and you know what? It is. Luckily, unlike some of the others on this list, this is one that not only can be fixed, but can be essentially completely erased. 
Unless, of course, the book's been sitting for many decades in the poly bag. I've said it 40 times on this channel, but boys and girls, don't forget to remove your poly bag before submitting to CGC. Otherwise, they'll pull down your pants and give you a financially devastating spanking. The next flaw is once again targeted to those who submit older books like silver, golds, and even early bronze books, and that is missing corners and chips. No, not missing as in a drastic chunk taken out, but I'm talking about like a centimeter or less of a missing corner or even part of the right edge. Obviously, something like this is going to hurt the grade, but you have no idea just how bad it will. When looking at this, it's important to first determine if it's small enough that it could possibly be marble chipping or be seen as a manufacturing error, which was an event that was caused by a dull paper cutter at the time of when it was printed. If it's not that manufacturing error, you might be in for a doozy. You tell yourself, self, this is going to hurt the grade, but you cannot prepare for how badly it actually does. When watching CGC's video on their channel of how they grade, they even mention in video how badly a missing chip of a centimeter or more will ding you. Check it out. We'll start with the missing piece off the corner. A piece this size that's missing typically will lower a comic book to around 6.0. So how CGC grades is they start with a 10 and they work down. So just starting with a corner chip of that size, this comic immediately went from a 10 to a 6.0. Ouch. And it would have had to have been completely flawless in all other areas just to retain that 6.0. Don't think it'll just be a grade drop or two. Try cutting the grade in half. It's completely not worth it. I mention this because these chips and missing corners seem to have less impact in the raw market. Often you'll find raw copies with these defects and they're not seen as devastatingly hurtful to the book. Maybe only mildly hurtful. That stigma is gone the moment it walks through CGC's doors, which is a great reminder of how raw comic collectors can differ from the more extremely strict eye of third-party appraisals. Unless it's a super ultra mega key, I'd keep that one at home. And finally, this last one is not so much a flaw that could exist in your book, and more of with the fundamentals of how CGC and CBCS, I might add, operate. And that is the ultimate comic book flaw, submitting a book with other lower key books. I had two copies of these. One was my copy, and I thought it could get a 9.8, but I noticed one thing wrong with it. Very, very small, but still, it was there. I swung an extra 25 at my local comic book shop for another one. That one was flawless. And I submitted both of these back to back, and I kind of wish I separated them because they gave both grades 9.4. All the comic book submitters watching this know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about squeezing a 9.8 beautiful candidate in between two, maybe 9.2 candidates of the exact same book and being surprised to see them all come back with a 9.2 cannot tell me that those are with the same grade. I argue that neither of them should have been 9.4, but to put both, I think maybe they got a little lazy or something. Yes, despite CGC having a multi-layered system with multiple eyes and constant double checking and quality control, the number one negative trend I find, other than return times, is submitting non-similar books. If you got a bunch of true 9.8 candidates, keep them together. If you've got a bunch of 8.5 to 9.2 looking books, keep those together. Don't mix and match. I've shown on this channel more than several times of when I got lazy and just sandwiched a book between other books with probably lesser grades, had them all receive a lesser grade by association, only to crack and resub and later get the 9.8. Isn't that interesting? Yes, again, this isn't so much on you, rather CGC or CBCS, but it just rings even more true whenever people say submit similar books. Some people have sent in books to CGC that only one had restoration with a little bit of color touch via a separate collection, and yet three other books got hit with the same restoration. This makes me think of my buddy that had to go through an extensive nightmarish appeal process to show them no, only one had restoration. 
I have had a wall of 9.4s only to resub five of the same books without even pressing, I might add, and get all 9.8s. Mint Hunter Comics life hack right here. Not only submit what you think are similar grades, but submit similar years. Meaning I submit all 1984 9.6 to 9.8 looking books at once. I submit all 2006 9.6 to 9.8 looking books at once. Doing this shouldn't matter, and perhaps it doesn't most of the time. However, I have hours of footage on this channel of showing it does seem to matter. And that's it, my friends. These are the five flaws that should make you question whether you really want to submit to CGC or not. Also, a quick update on last week's polls. You voted which book should be submitted to CGC. And not only was there a two-way tie between Amazing Spider-Man 265, the first appearance of Silver Sable, and Hulk 347, the first Joe Fix-It persona, but that Keebler Teen Titans drug issue was only three votes away, so we're going to submit that one as well. Thanks to all your comments and participation. Don't forget to comment and like on your way out from this video. And as always, especially this Black Friday, keep on hunting.